Recently, I made a review video where I compared the Gen 2 Forester Scandi against the original version of the Forester from Work Tough Gear. Well, now I have another knife to compare with this one, and that is the Gen 2 Forester, but this one is in Saber Grind. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on them and see how they compare, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, two things I want to mention. First, I want to thank Vic at Work Tough Gear for sending out both versions of the Forester Generation 2, one in Sabre and one in Scandi Grind. Now, the next thing I want to mention is that I probably won't go through all of the same tests I did with the Gen 1 or the original Forester, mostly because these knives are very, very similar in design and nature. Of course, the knife that I'm focusing in on today being the Sabre Grind is a little bit different, so I will be doing some of the same task, just not all of them. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when I get to it. So I recently made that review video between the original Forester and the Gen 2 Forester, both in Scandi Grind. And in that video, I compared them side by side. Now I'm going to put the link to that video, as well as the original review of the Forester, the original Forester that is, at the end of this video, if you're interested in seeing them. That also will mean that I can shorten this video up a little bit. All the specifications and links, of course, will be in the video description. So what I'm going to do to get started is just bring the camera in a little closer. I'm going to show you both knives side by side. I will give you some specifications, but it's the similarities and differences that I want to focus in on. Then, of course, we'll start doing some demonstrations. All right, of course, just before we focus in on the knife, I do want to share the sheath with you. And I say this with all of the sheaths that Vic makes at Work Tough Gear, they're Kydex to perfection. They're simple, but very functional, of course, as well. And this is no different. Now, this one, I do have my belt attachment attached to on the back, and there are a variety of ways you can do this. Of course, this is the way I like to carry it. You know, the sheath just drain hole, multiple attachment points, perfect fit around it. Let me just slide the knife into the sheath, and you'll hear it click. And of course, it's it's not coming out. I'm, I don't have to shake it all that hurt. You know it's not coming out because Vix not, does this Kydex just so very well. So let's put the sheath all the way and we'll focus in on the knife. Now, I'm going to give you some specifications. And of course, this will all be in the video description below. And I will also be bringing in the other one, the Scandi, Gen 2 Forster Scandi, in a moment, just so you can see the two of them. By the way, I'm sure everybody knows this, but there is the symbol right up there. Let's see if I can bring it in close enough for you to see. These are designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives in Quebec, Canada, and of course produced by Vic Lin at Work Tough Gear. So, uh, you know, I have a, a friendship that I've built up with Alex over time. He is a fellow Canadian, and he has a very, very similar view on knives that I do, which is one of the reasons why I always love the opportunity to test and review his knives out. And you can see I've done some testing on this one already. Okay, let's just dig into the specifications. Overall length, tip to pommel, 8.75 inches, blade length 4.25 inches. The blade thickness is 3.8 millimeters, which is, my notes fell down, 0.149 of an inch, a little bit thicker than the original, which was 3.5 millimeters, so just a little bit thicker stock. The blade height from edge to spine is 1.12 inches or 28.5 millimeters. The weight on this knife is 8 inches or 8 ounces, 227 grams. And with the sheath, 12.8 ounces, 364 grams. The steel used on this version, as it is on the Generation 2 and Scandi, is SK85, hardened to 56 to 58 on the Rockwell scale. And you'll hear me say this often. I get an opportunity now to test a lot of steels including a couple of the newer super steels and I haven't seen anybody been able to do a heat treat like Vic can on a carbon steel like this one. It's just outstanding. It really is. It not only holds its edge for a long time, it's very tough. It is still carbon steel, so you still have to take care of it, of course. And let's just take a look at the handles themselves. Now, I'll mention again things I've mentioned in previous videos about them, but the number one is this is a tri-color uh, G10, as you can see, it's quite attractive in nature. It also does stand out. I probably didn't need that little piece of orange paracord on the end of it, but I like to attach it. And you can see the hidden lanyard hole and the pommel is slightly exposed as well. Now, as far as the other improvements, 
or updates, if you will, upgrades on this Gen 2 version compared with the Gen 1. I'll let you go to the video where I compared the Scandi versions of those two knives to see that. But I just let's focus in on the grip for a moment because this is where one of the things that really makes this knife shine. And of course, I say this all the time when it comes to a bushcraft knife, they have very specific needs and very specific design requirements if it's going to be functional and comfortable in your hand. First off, you don't want an excessive amount of contouring in any dimension because that works against you for being able to move the grip in or the knife into different grips in your hands. This has minimal uh, flaring out in the middle section, the palm section. It is a little narrow up here, same at the bottom. Same thing there, but it's not overly done like some knives can be. It does have really, really functional thumb scallops there, which handle, uh, which are very nice. I'll talk more about those in a second. And this is something that is not as well understood as it probably could be, unless you're, of course, you are a bushcrafter, is the pommel itself. It is not only rounded, but there's very little protrusion or beak down here at the end. And the reason why that is so important on a bushcraft knife, because unlike a lot of knives, this must function in a variety of grips. It's not a chopping knife where you want to grab onto it and have a big hook on the end to keep it from slipping out of your hand. This knife, you want to be able to roll over in your hand into any, uh, you know, possible grip that you might want to use it in and have it remain comfortable and easy to grab onto. And, you, you know, I guess what you say is you're indexing on it so that you know what it's all about. The thumb grip, thumb stud, or thumb scallop here works really well in this grip. Especially important is in this grip. And I can just, you know, you can drill with this because of that rounded pommel. It's just a super well designed handle for a bushcraft knife. Not overly contoured, just enough. You feel very comfortable in your hand as you should. Now let's just go back to the blade for a second. It is a drop point, just it's not quite at center point, so it's not a spear point. So there is a drop, still very functional for, for drilling with, and it is a high saber. And that's what differentiates this knife between it and its Scandi brother. These two knives have just slightly different dynamics when it comes to carving. I actually, honestly, I'll, let's, let's declare this right up front. I like this knife. I like this knife a lot. I actually prefer saber grinds over Scandi grinds most of the time. Now, I'll acknowledge that a well-done Scandi knife is a great knife for carving with. It'll bite into the wood very readily. It'll carve very readily. And of course, because it's got one grind, by the way, these knives both have a micro secondary polished and convex. That's one of the hallmarks for uh, or Vix knives uh, production is they they always have come like that are just amazing and, and it holds an edge just that much longer and resists damage that much longer as well. But a saber grime is somewhere between a Scandi and a full flat knife. Now a Scandi, yes, it does carve very well, but it doesn't slice anywhere near as well. A full flat grime is very slicey, but it not. Oh, not often does it carve as well. And because it's thinner all the way from the top to the bottom, it's usually not as strong. Not to say that they're not strong, it's just that the Scandi version, if it's the same stock, and same height, the Scandi version will be stronger. It just has to be. There's more metal all the way down until the grind starts. Well, this is something that's in between the two of them. It's a high saber, so it still has some of the flat part, retains a lot of the strength that a Scandi strength that a Scandi version would do have, but because it the grind starts so high, it's much more slicey. It's the nicest balance you can get between a Scandi and a full flat grind. And that's the reason why I like this so much. All right, first demonstration, of course, is batoning. And uh, what I have here is 13 inch piece of rock maple, uh, not quite, about two inches in diameter. Let's give it a go. I expect no problems with it. Actually, I was batoning earlier today, so I know I'm not going to have any baton problems with it. Yep, no problems at all. <laughs> Look at the curve on that. Wow, okay. Let's hope I can get a few pieces out of this that I can do some demonstrations with, otherwise I'll have to go to some other splits off of that same uh, tree that I cut down. All right, so what I'm going to do is just continue to split this out and see if I can't find something worth going, doing for future demonstrations on, and then I'll bring you back for the next. 
All right, these are the ones I just split out. Look, look at the curvature on that. Um, I might be able to do some feathering on it, but I'm not gonna try and make a tent peg with those. So this is the length of wood from the same tree, just a different section off it. This one's about 14 inches long. So it's a little long for a tent peg, but I think I, what I'll do with that is I'll cut it down through cross batoning because that's always a good test for any knife, especially on a hardwood. So I'm just gonna go straight through with this and then I'll notch it. All right, that was easy enough. Actually, I buried it into the, my little chopping block at the same time. All right, so to notch this, I'm just going to give it... Actually, let's see. Let's do this one by hand right now. So I'm just going to kind of roll my hand into it a little bit, create my stop cut, and just push my thumbs up to create the L7 notch that would hold the tent peg. Kind of work right around this one just to be a little different today. All right, well, that's all I need to have for a tent peg is an L7 notch like that. That'll grab onto it. Now I'll just reset the camera up and I'll put a point on the other end. All right, and the purpose of this test is just to demonstrate how well this knife is controls and how comfortable it feels in reverse grip with that thumb scallop. So there is my point on there and all we need to do or not my point my notch all we need to do is just hog off a little material and create a point oh yeah and it has great bite great penetration and works very easily and I didn't even feel the grip of my hand that's what's all important about a knife like this all right, next demonstration will be feather sticking. All right, these are the splits off of that really curvy piece of wood. I think I actually will work on one of these. I'll just choose it. And uh, because I don't have to feather stick the whole length of it, I think I'll take this one. I'm gonna take that heartwood off, one because it's kind of punky anyway. Clean that right off. Maybe we'll do it in both directions. All right, that gives me some edges that I can work on for feathering. Let's see how it does. <laughs> yeah, if we can keep them on the stick. I'm rolling over the heartwood again, so they usually don't stay on, but they're doing okay. Now I'm through the heartwood. I'm back into some regular wood again. Work out towards the tip for the really fine... Oh, yeah. Little tiny little bugles is what I like to call them. Right there. Those are the type that will catch the spark from the ferrocerium rod. Need a few more than that, of course, if I'm going to do that. All right, so here's my thoughts on using this. So uh, having used the Scandi version of this, in fact, where is that knife? Let me just bring that one back into the picture. All right, so here is the Scandi version of the same knife. And I'm just gonna run this one down the wood to give a comparison when it comes to carving feather sticks with this. So let's here's the exact same piece of wood. I have to readjust my technique a little bit and there is a difference there is a real difference in fact all right so what I'm seeing between the two knives is is that when you lay them flat and you rotate your wrist up to find the angle the Scandi will find the angle a little faster than the Sabre will at the same time, the saber stays nice and low to the stick, and that's because, of course, the grind comes so much further back. Um, okay, I just have to do that again with the pickup where I left off with the saber version. Let's try it a little bit on the outside there. Kind of angle away. All right, once again, the Saber version. Try it on the other outside. Or 
both knives are very capable, capable of doing the feathering. All right. Okay, I can't tell if it's a bias I have because I otherwise love sabers so much as, as a poet. Not that I have anything against a Scandi grind, but honestly, for some reason, this goes against conventions. This one, the saber, is easier for me to carve with than is the, the Scandi version. You know, there is a weight difference as well. You, well, that's expected. You've got less or more metal on the Scandi version than you do on the saber version, but there's a slight difference there. But otherwise, the knives are virtually identical. I think I could probably do a little bit of scraping with this one just to show that it's capable of that. All right, a few closing thoughts on the Work Tough Gear Generation 2 Forester in Saber Grind. And I do have the Scandi version with me right here so I can do some comparisons as I talk. Uh, I still, like I said before, I really like this knife. In fact, between the two versions of the knife, this will be the knife that I carry most off. And it just seems to be a little bit more versatile for all the things that I do with a knife out here in the wood. This is going to be, well it is, because I, like I often do with, is test my knives out in the kitchen for cutting. And this is a better cutter of vegetables and meats and things like that because of that high saber grind. Just a little bit more versatile. But then again, I think it really comes down to personal choice. What is it that you value most or want most in terms of your performance between these two knives? I honestly did not expect to be able to carve feather sticks as easily with the Sabre as I would have with the Scandi. But the truth is, maybe it's because I put more time on the Sabre, but the Sabre is, does a better job for me. And that's probably what it is. It's more technique than it is anything else. And a lot of people prefer the Scandi grind for carving, especially feather sticks. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's what it's all about. It is exactly designed for that purpose. And it is a tough, tough knife because that's almost all flat stock. You can, I can actually feel the weight difference between the two knives because of that. This one just has a little bit more versatility. I think this is going to be a real winner when it comes to a general knife, a general outdoors knife. You know what? I think it'd make a great hunting knife fishing knife? Well, I don't know about that. Well, it is carbon steel, so I don't know that I want to keep it around the water all the time. But for everything that I do out in the woods, this is the choice that I would prefer to carry. Having said that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Scandi version for anybody who prefers that. So, uh, final thoughts? It's really, it's up to you. Both of these knives are high value in terms of what you get for your money. They're both super well made. We've talked often about the quality of Work Tough Gear knives. There's just, you know, it, you can't beat it. It's, it's semi-custom in nature. It's what they call mid-tech construction. So a lot of the uh, final work, all the final work is done by hand. Uh, polishing, sharpening, everything else that has to go with the fitting of the handles and everything is all done by hand. Family run business in Taiwan, as many of you would know. Here's something I do want to point out though, and this may be of as much interest to my Canadian viewers as it is anybody else. Most people who try to buy Work Tough Gear knives from the Work Tough Gear website have trouble because they find often they're sold out. And the reason they're sold out is because that's the place everybody goes to buy them as soon as they become available. It happens quite frequently and people get quite upset about that. I understand that. You wait and wait and wait and you just missed your opportunity to get one. But don't fear, there are other retailers, other distributors of Work Tough Gear knives. There is at least two in the U.S. and one in Canada and one in Europe that I'm aware of. And I'm going to be putting the links to all of those in the video description. So this is why I say for Canadian viewers. By the way, that company just happens to be here in Nova Scotia. It's called Wild Coast Camping. So you will be able to get your knives through one of these locations if you're really interested in, the, in them. All right, uh, I think I've done enough comparing these two knives. I've declared my bias towards the, the Saber Ground version, but you may have a different opinion on it. Please share that opinion with me in the comment section below. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. I'll put all the information I have for these knives, including the specifications and the links, especially the links I just mentioned outside of Work Tough Gear itself. They'll all be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.